reappearing in the living room Beatrice found she could move. However she was now in the playpen in the corner of the room. Luna walked up to the bars of the pen. Harness. She commanded and Beatrice found that she was once again able to move her arms. Luna then smiled. I've been thinking of the best way to ensure that my junior witch in training doesn't get too big for her britches and try to start casting spells against me. Luna informed Beatrice. And of course I've come up with a perfect solution. She said holding up a pair of mittens connected via a length of cord in one hand. In the other she held a pacifier. Letting go of the two objects they both stopped in mid-air whether frozen or simply levitated Beatrice didn't know. All she knew that whatever power Luna had over messing with people's heads she was using now because she could concentrate on nothing else. Luna then picked up her wand and spun it at the two garments. Pacifier. She commanded and Beatrice found the pacifier between her lips and clipped onto her shirt via a pink mini mouse clip. Mittens. Luna spoke again. This time Beatrice found her hands placed inside the white mittens and the cord was placed underneath her shirt. Suddenly Beatrice's head became clear. Not caring about mittens or pacifiers she aimed a lightning bolt spell at Luna. The mittens sparked as the lightning discharged but they did not rip. Instead Beatrice watched as the lightning travelled up from one mitten across the cord and down through the other. Without warning Beatrice's gloved hand raised itself up and planted itself firmly against the back of her diaper. Beatrice looked at her padded hand as if it had betrayed her. She had just spanked herself, hard. She turned to glower at Luna who simply smirked causing Beatrice's anger to boil over. Spitting out the pacifier Beatrice began to chant an incantation. As she reached the climax of the spell she found pacifier hovering just inches from her lips. Her eyes wide she watched as the end of the pacifier began to glow. Suddenly it shot into her mouth and Beatrice felt the jolt of a spell run through her. It was then she found herself wailing. Not an adult cry but a helpless babyish cry that was so immature that Beatrice just felt so little stupid and helpless and the tears came as she subsided to deep gulping breaths. Beatrice then found herself orbed right in front of Luna who took hold of her diaper and checked it. A spanked ass, a little cranky tantrum but there's nothing downstairs. Luna smiled releasing the waistband of Beatrice's diaper and giving it a pat. Maybe what you need is a makeover. Luna smiled. A dark haze filled the living room and as three tormentors were summoned into the living room. In their shadow forms they stared at Beatrice with their unblinking silver eyes. Then they began to reform. Their bodies shrunk down and moved into the coloured spectrum. Each tormentor began to morph. The first became a small blonde the second tormentor sprouted mousy brown hair from underneath a green-coloured straw hat. She was wearing a summery outfit consisting of a dual-cut top with a soft green stripe along the top. It was white underneath the green stripe and finished just above the tormentor's three-quarter length green pants. The last tormentor moulded itself into a girl slightly older than the other two. This tormentor transformed itself into a having red hair, hung in pigtails, whilst wearing a white USA soccer shirt and pink track pants. The demons then rounded on a still-frozen Beatrice eyeing her with haunting silver eyes. The two younger tormentors then swiped at Beatrice's legs knocking her down to their size whilst the oldest grabbed at Beatrice's top. Ripping it off of Beatrice's back the redhead then stuffed the top down the back of Beatrice's diaper.